Hello, this is John Arundel from Minx Microdrives. This short video shows you how to use the Minx Point and Signal Actuator System to operate a point. First of all, test the system and centre the actuator arm position. Power up the controller with 12 to 24 volts AC or DC. In this case I'm using 14 volts DC. When you switch on, the controller does the systems check. Take one of the 1 meter ribbon cables supplied and plug the black plug into the one of the sockets on the controller. Doesn't matter which, left or right hand channels. Make sure it's pushed fully down. At the actuator end, uh, push the red plug into the connector on the actuator. Note that it has a locating spigot on one end of it. Status LED on the controller channel you're using will turn from red to green. Now slide the switches on the channel you're using to point and to calibrate. Press the operate button and the actuator will move from one end to the other. The actuator will travel its full travel range and the LEDs will switch the relays over from one uh, position to the other. Also see the little LED on the actuator flashing rapidly as it moves from one position to the other. Now slide the lower switch from calibrate to move and the actuator will move through the full travel range, the one you've just calibrated. You can test the alarm function if you like by putting your finger in the way. And press the operate button to cancel the alarm. And the actuator will return to the position it was in originally. Lastly, press the center button and the actuator will go to its mid position. Disconnect the ribbon cable from the actuator. Best thing to do is to put your thumb on top of the actual connector and your second uh, finger underneath the wire and lever it gently up. The same thing applies to the controller where the black connector is a rather firmer fit. Now install the actuator at the point. The actuator is already in mid position so move the point blades to mid position and just um, jam them with uh, some thin wood so that we've now got the actuator and the point in mid position. In this particular point a piece of thinner wire than 1.2 millimeters the rod we supply has actually been connected to the tired bar and in order to connect it to the actuator uh, that thinner piece of wire is going to have to be connected to one of our 1.2 millimeter rods so it fits into the boss properly. The operating rod between the tire bar of the point and the actuator arm should run as straight as possible. There may well also be a height difference. Now you could cut away the cork on the baseboard top and sink the actuator down very slightly. In this particular case, as I'm joining two rods of different diameter, I'm going to bend the thicker of the two uh, down as this particular actuator is going to be hidden under scenery. Do a final visual check before you solder the two rods together and make sure everything is running dead straight and that the rods are neither pointing upwards or downwards as this will put unnecessary pressure on the actuator operating arm. Having made the connection with the actuator obviously removed away from solder you can now screw the actuator down into position. Now tighten up the uh, boss uh, arm screw that holds the rod into place but make sure you're supporting the arm underneath when you're doing that so you don't put any downward pressure on it. Now decide where you're going to put the controller hopefully within one meter the ribbon cable length of where the actuator actually is. This is so that you can affect local control uh, within arm's length. The controller can be mounted in a number of positions some customers have even hinged it underneath the baseboard. Having fixed the controller in position, then drill a hole or route the uh, ribbon cable accordingly up to the actuator. You'll need a, a drill about 5 eighths of an inch diameter to push the uh, connector through, but you could route it along the edge of the baseboard if you wanted to do so. But don't cut the ribbon cable. Uh, if it's too long then fold it up uh, and use an elastic band to hold it. We can supply longer lengths up to 4 metres. Now don't forget to remove the two chocks from uh, the point blades 
before you power the controller up and we're all set to calibrate the uh, the point. Good idea also to check that the point is firmly fixed down and cannot move because the actuator rod will exert quite a lot of force uh, moving the point blades over in some cases. Now power up the controller. It does the usual run round of the LEDs. You've got the green status light on for the channel you're using. Make sure you're in point mode and switch back to calibrate. Now press the operate button. And again, and now the point has been calibrated over its throw range. The drop of oil where the uh, point uh, blades slide over the chairs is a good idea. Uh, it helps the point to move easily. And I may not have mentioned earlier, but it's also fairly important that you check that the tie bar is fairly free moving before you even connect the actuator up to it. You can see the actual calibration process takes literally uh, no more than about 10 seconds. Now uh, move the slide switch to the move position and now you can operate the point locally by pushing the operator button. And you'll notice as the relays uh, switch over then the LEDs indicate that they have indeed switched over successfully and the point has done its calibrated uh, throw range. If something gets in the way, the system will alarm and uh, tell you the LED will flash and of course so will the controller. Just press the operate button to cancel the alarm. If you need to recalibrate the throw range at any time, you just merely push the slide switch back to calibrate, press the button twice and the point will automatically recalibrate the throw range and then you push that switch back to move and you're ready to continue as you were before. If you want to operate the uh, point remotely off a panel, then refer to the wiring diagram. You have to use pure DC for the remote circuit and a simple on-off switch, which will synchronise with the position of the point and the uh, push button, operate button on the controller. If you want to use our system to operate signals, um, then you'll still need to centre the actuator before you actually connect up the uh, actuator arm to the uh, rodding of the signal itself and we suggest that you modularize it like this so you can easily remove it from the baseboard out of harm's way for maintenance and repair work. Uh, in this particular case we've got two actuators on a two doll signal. Signals are actually calibrated uh, between two set points using the preset on the controller and then you can set the variable amount of balance from something or nothing at all if you're operating ground signals. If you're working in double and N gauge where the actuator is uh, clearly relatively larger for points, you may want to consider operating it from underneath the baseboard, in which case a simple bracket uh, and then moving the uh, actuator through a right angle uh, piece of rod will do the trick. Quite simple, but of course you've got to lie underneath the baseboard to install it. And the rod goes through the centre of the tyre bar. Well I hope you found this video useful and happy modelling!